This is a LumiShade tutorial, uh, an extension of the LumiShade coloring tutorial I did recently. Uh, linear light is the Photoshop equivalent if you want to follow in Photoshop. So let's just get into a few things about LumiShade and why it behaves like it does, why I use it sometimes, often, sometimes not and uh, get you get you going with this so you don't it doesn't feel uh, so you can really harness the power of this layer effect um, <clears throat> first off I want to give a short, brief warning uh, you're gonna see me color picking and doing stuff around in here and here Please note that everyone may have a different color profile. How these work and what the benefits are is for an entirely different tutorial. But <clears throat> note that uh, how it looks here may not be how it looks on your machine. As if I pick these, you can see it moves around. Uh, so I'm going to be on HSV. You can follow on on that if that helps you out. But otherwise, just kind of follow around. This stuff isn't that important. Um, as much as listening and seeing what's happening. So first thing to note is, and this is I think something you guys should all do on your own, but uh, understanding how your layer effects work um, and why LumiShade is different than the majority of the Psy, if not all the Psy layer effects. Uh, I had a series of... Uh, Benefits I mentioned earlier in my other tutorial, you can look at them here. It's not a big deal. We'll come back to this in a bit while we're drawing, and uh, it'll make a little more sense for you. So here I have uh, two snapshots of the, the 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 color wheel. I'm doing this so I can show you some just some interesting aspects of Lumi Shade. So this one is Lumi. Shade, and this one is our control. Uh, our control is just basically going to be a, a bunch of different other effects, so we can see the difference. Uh, actually, let's move this here so we can actually see it at the same time. Um, first thing to note: Lumi Shade behaves a lot like overlay. So this one is currently set to overlay. What we have here is a background that's 50% gray as our neutral color, completely neutral. And uh, the reason I pick 50% gray is because LumiShade and overlay apply no effects at 50% color. So when you hit this color range here on your, on your color wheel, there's zero color. Uh, that happens on what you're doing. Uh, so, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm just going to simply show you some a few things. First of all, the reason I say Lumi Shades like overlay is if you drop it down to about 50%, Lumi Shade layer, you'll see it almost has the exact same color. This is misleading, and you'll see why in th just three seconds here. It's not exactly the same because if we drop the background color, you'll see that overlay relies entirely on the pixels that exist below to exist. Lumi shade on the other persists past darkness, complete blackness. Same thing for whiteness. Overlay requires colors beneath to function. Lumi shade does not. You will see color past white. This is important because it allows you to do things like colorize the edges of glows so that you have a really strong color on, on um, in the darks and in your lights that you can't normally get from any of the layer, other layer effects. So I'm going to pump this back up to 50 to 100% and get the real colors here. Another thing you'll notice, if I shift these luminance again, you'll notice that as I get lighter and darker, the colors and the color wheel, the, the color chart here in the center, the value, and this stuff stays exactly the same. In Lumi Shade Land, 
things all get pretty wacky. Some colors expand, some colors shrink uh, in the color uh, wheel. And this stuff moves up and to the left. It'll just take a look, you'll see what's going on. Why there's a chunk missing here, I don't know why, but it's not that important. It's just going to be a bunch of white. Um, so as I decrease, as I decrease the background color, you can see the yellow band shortening. The yellow band shortens, the green, the, 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 the magenta and the cyan. And as it goes to white, the green, the red, uh, sorry, the yellow, the cyan, and the magenta increase in size. This is super important because what this does is it gives you free analogous colors across a gray spectrum. I'll explain this in another control here uh, better so you can really visually see what's going on. But essentially what happens with the Lumi shade is as you go darker, color wheel values shift, saturation increases, and the whole you're basically shifting the whole color spectrum up. You can literally see it as it moves upwards. It really looks like a little shifty window moving upwards. Same thing when you do it this way. All you're doing is when it goes, as you lighten the background color, you're shifting all the colors down. Okay. This seems really weird and you might be super lost. Don't worry about it. You don't have to understand this super strong. Uh, well, you just have to understand that the difference between overlay, you know, multiply is the same deal. Here, I'll show you. Multiply, increase the background color. It's just a flat, it just colors flatly against the back. If I go to uh, screen, give you the, gives you the same deal. If I decrease the value and increase the value, you get the same same flat on the other but on Lumi shade all the all the colors and all the spectrums are shifting around very violently almost so we can use this to our advantage unfortunately because of this we have a much smaller range of what a functional color is for most coloring uh, you know in this color space you know here's your safe world as soon as you, this is going to be, you know, your colored glows, this is going to be your blown out whites, this is going to be your heavy saturates, this is just going to darken everything to mush, uh, unless it's really light. So your your range is very, much smaller, and one of the problems with this is that that causes banding. If you have a small range of pixels and only a certain amount of values that can go up and down, you're going to get uh, a compressed color range and you're going to have banding. You have to be more attentive to that. There's ways around it. Mostly you just have gradient tools. You have airbrush tools that have textures in them. If you look at this, you can actually, if I can get a comparison here. All my, all my, um, all my airbrush tools have a, a grain to them just literally to stop banding. So you can have blending tools that do it. You know, as long as there's a texture to your airbrush and to your blenders, uh, a little stippled texture banding it really isn't that big of a deal and to be quite honest you should be having a texture in there anyway it makes it look a little nicer so let's move over to this part here and then I'm just going to show you quickly what I'm talking about so here we have the control values okay so this is the gray you know 50% you know, halfway black 50% halfway to white white uh, so if I'm, I'm going to turn on my Lumi shade on this one, and I'm going to actually color this one in as well. Okay, so here we have the same value of kind of a brown. Here, if I, it's actually right here. Here's a here's a kind of mustardy brown, and across the gray colors, you actually, if you look at the color wheel, you can see it crawl across the spectrum, and it crawls across. 
the the hue as well and it's in a kind of analogous you know pleasing fashion whereas here you have this muddy progression and it's almost completely vertical it's very unfun same thing with multiply you got to be very careful because this just goes straight up very unfun colors uh, Lumi shade uh, sorry if you go to shade which I never use and if you want to know what shade is, shade is just the lower part of Lumi Shade. Um, supposedly, Lumi is the top part of Lumi Shade, but I don't agree with that. I don't think it works that way. In any case, you know, normal is just going to flat color it, multiply. And over the screen, more flat coloring. Although this one goes, there's it desaturates. Screen is like the safer is the safer way to do highlights because it doesn't blow it out with saturation, which uh, it can you know one of the problems with layer effects is that you always get tons of saturation to what you're doing and it looks kind of crazy. Um, you know, so you can you can still kind of control what you're doing with Lumi Shade and have it not so strong. You know, you don't have to go overboard. But the reality is that you have to f kind of fit in this small spectrum. Um, and additionally, the issue is you got to color pick from the layer, uh, which is right here. Where we're color picker. You got to set your color picker to working layer. So that you can actually pick what's on the layer and not what the blending mode is because you're going to be spending so much time on colors that don't look like your original colors. Fact is, is you can just shortcut a key in your shortcuts to color pick layer. So just do that. It's faster and easier. Um, so now that we kind of got this simple concept out and why that's advantageous. I'm going to just apply it to something here and then you're going to get, it's going to show you why there's more advantages of doing this this way. So here I have some line art 